Okay, so we got our um, a human and some ground for it to stand on, even though we haven't really applied gravity yet. It's just the ground's a little bit below the character, so it looks like he's standing on it right now. I did that a couple videos back, and to finish up the quick start, it'd be nice to actually move this character. I did make a change since that last video. Um, when I added in the light, instead of calling self.render like the parent tree here, I just put that to render.attach node and then render.setLight. And uh, the reason I do that is, well, getting into Python, remember everything in Python is object oriented. It doesn't matter whether we use the class notation or just set up a .py script with a bunch of functions. Uh, we can treat them the same when we ask for them. Uh, so when they set up Panda 3D, they have it set up for show basis set up for both ways. So uh, I guess doing it that way, this self dot render is attached to this particular scene we're working on, but the render called in the other way as a import the module instead of uh, inherit from the class is the as the same type of object but it can be accessed from other scenes other it can be accessed from other objects but that's getting a little complicated so here i just decided that well i'll just use this one render method inside of our class because uh, what we're doing here is not gonna it'll be a while before we get to multiple scenes and even then it's it's not really a significant difference to we could just copy and paste this over to the other scene. Don't necessarily need to change it. So I did add that self part there. Uh, it's a, We can go either way with the render object, really. I uh, probably should have just done that to begin with. So now to the key presses and getting our character to move. So first thing we need is we need a way to access our keys. And there's a number of ways. Uh, and there's some pre-built movements. But uh, for... A relatively simple equation uh, it's some first semester of linear algebra so if you haven't had a linear algebra class it might seem a little complicated but it's uh, I'll just type in the uh, equations exactly uh, it's it's not that bad just a couple lines uh, so for doing that I personally I find that just typing in those that simple linear algebra matrix multiplication to rotate a vector easier than uh, remembering all the names for the methods. So I'm just going to do that, though Panda 3D does come with built-in methods, but and I find it easy to just type in a few simple math equations. So I bring, I use the engines for the hard part and do you know, a couple lines of math myself. So the rendering, definitely don't want to type that all that up, but I can add to XY coordinates in uh, just a few lines so that's we'll do that real quick and obviously we could do like we did just did in the 2d game and have a w go positive and w and s go on the y-axis and a and d go on the x-axis and move back and forth so to change it up and uh, what we're doing will almost work in the uh, 2d engine it actually be easier in the 2d engine because then it would be regular trigonometry instead of linear algebra. But uh, to since so we've saw that regular movement, it should translate directly over to changing the coordinates. So this time, let's do the rotate and move. So that um, like our W key is just forward, and then our A and D keys will rotate our character to the left and right. So we'll need some key presses, and there's multiple ways to get them. What I like to use is this thing called mouse watcher node. And with it, basically the, the engine just rechecks every frame of the game to see if there's a key press. So we need to first off set up some references to our keys. So I'll do self dot, um, well, I'm gonna call it forward, backward, turn right and turn left. So forward will be our A key, which we're, what we're referencing is keyboard button dot 
ASCII underscore key and what well, oh, forward will be the W key. So what would normally be up, we're just gonna have that move our character forward. And then we'll have a backward. Backward that will reference the a keyboard button dot ASCII dot ASCII underscore key for the S to move backwards and then turn right and turn left on the D and A. But I'm going to pause the video to save time while I type it. Same thing, just D and A over here. Okay, so I got those typed in and the mouse watcher node is included in the base that's something we'll get from the base so it, we don't have to do any more imports or anything so now our game knows about those four keys at least so let's come down here and make a method to move our character so after we render that stuff i'll define this method uh, i'll call it move character character and to handle um, a lot of the updating frame to frame, there's a task manager built into this show base class. Well, actually built into the base class and then show base is an expansion on the base class. So we can use that task manager. And so we're in class notation. So obviously we, the first thing has to be the self. And then anything that the task manager is going to handle, we have to pass in a task. So we'll need those two things. And the very last thing, if the task manager is handling it, we'll return task, whoops, task dot uh, C-O-N-T, continue, abbreviation for continue. So that'll be the last thing. And well, I'm gonna kind of work backwards here because ultimately what we want to get down to is self dot human a reference to our uh, player object dot set well we could call this same one we did here the set position uh, there's a slightly better way which is set fluid position and from our perspective it will look exactly the same if it's a big jump the character will be in one spot and then the next frame the character will be way over in the other spot but the difference is on the inside with set fluid position, the computer will know that the character passed through every spot in between. And that's important for collision detection. So ultimately what we're gonna do is we're gonna pass in a new X value, a new Y value, and just move X and Y, not dealing with zero yet. That would be jumping. So we're gonna change those. We could create a 3D vector and pass that in, but this method is overloaded, so we have more than one thing we can pass in. So now we need to use those key presses to adjust our new X and new Y values. And so this is going to be the rotate and rotate and forward, then go forward type of movement. So we're going to need two speeds in this case to work with a linear speed. And I'm just going to pick a value to start with, maybe 0 0.3. We're moving 60 frames per second. So multiply that by 60 and that's how many pixels or it would actually move or how many of our units it would actually move. I guess we're measuring in meters here. So uh, 0.3 times 60 is how many meters we would move in one second. So that might be a little bit high. Is that um, 18, 1.8? So moving about two meters per second. So a couple steps, I guess uh, we can adjust it. We'll that's just a guess for a starting point, and we'll adjust it. Angular speed, the speed we turn at, I have a much better idea on. Again, moving 60 frames per second. Uh, so if we move three in three degrees each each frame, then that means we turn 180 degrees or halfway around in one second. So that might be a better turning speed. And then we'll have a couple of variables to adjust. So turn zero and so a turn value, and that's how much our X is gonna adjust by, and a step value, which is how much our 
uh, the distance. So the angle and the distance that we're actually moving. So now we're ready to fill those in. Um, there's some linear algebra. So I think I'll split this up into two sections so I can describe the linear algebra a little bit better. But we do still have time here to go ahead and type the go over the syntax for the uh, key press. So I'm going to call it that in reference. Make a reference to something called key press. Just a local reference here. That way it resets every frame. And that's going to call the base dot mouse watcher node. And in there is a method called is button down. So we'll call uh, we'll check this value. I guess that's a going to be a boolean value, as you can tell from the fact that it starts with is, and that'll tell us if there's a key press or not. And I better put that e in there. I'm going to get a typo here very shortly. And then we can just check and see what key press it is. So if that key press, which is now a method that we got from here. Uh, notice we didn't put the parentheses on the method here. We assigned that to key press, and I'm going to put the parentheses on the method down here to pass in an argument. Self dot turn left. That's something that happens a lot in coding, but not necessarily in Python coding, so you may not have seen that before. This is a function, but we didn't put the parentheses there. We just reassigned it over here and put the parentheses and passed in the arguments to that reassigned name on it. So if it's turn left, which is our A key, then turn is going to um, be assigned our angular speed. Um, one of them needs to be positive and one negative. I'm not sure which direction is which right now, so I'm just going to guess left is positive and right is negative. So if the key press is a self dot turn right, then I'll assign the turn a ne negative angular speed, which might need adjusted once we see it. So this is just a guess and check to starting point, and that might be backwards. If our key press, oops, key press is, oops, it's not a comparison, it's a function. Sorry about that. If key press with a self dot forward is returns a true, well then we'll set our step, our linear one, to um, again either the positive or negative. We'll see which way it moves and maybe reverse those. So I'm going to start with forward is positive and backward is negative, but Instead of thinking everything through, it's probably a lot easier just to run it and see if our character is moving backward from what we would think forward and backward are. And if it's backward, do step equals negative linear speed. And now, between here and here, we have some... Uh, some linear algebra do, to do in order to turn and move. But if you wanted to just do left and right up and down movement, that would be enough. Though you'd probably want different names on the references here. But we're already up at almost 14 minutes, so I'll do the linear algebra in the next video. That way we can get a full explanation, kind of a, try to explain it somewhat thoroughly. Uh, I'll see you there.